Archie the Sharp Shooter Sharp. Hey. Welcome to ISN Network in association with TB Promotions. This is also the first time that we've met, so I'm going to keep this as unprofessional as possible to get past all the times I've seen you at the, um, the weigh-ins for your previous fights and I've been meaning to speak to you. What brings you down to this iBox gym? I've never seen you here before. Yes, obviously, um, I'm now here full-time. Okay. Alan Smith's my trainer, so I'm training under um, Alan Smith. All right, okay. And it's going very well. So it's been it's my second week now. Right. And uh, me and my old trainer Richard, we're still in contact. We're still there's no bad blood there. It was a mutual decision. Okay. Uh, we both got to where we can, number four in the WBO world ranking. So now it's time to move on. And Al, with his experience and his knowledge, he'll it, it, get me the world title fight for sure. What made you that obviously make you change that decision really? <laughs> Um, after I won the WBO, I had a couple of fl uh, flat performances, I think it's fair to say. Mm. I wasn't the same Archie Sharp that everybody knows. Um, been with my trainer for 18 years, do you know what I mean? Touching 19 years, so it's, it's a long time. We got very, we got complacent together. Um, and the respect as a fighter and a trainer, I think, kind of faded out. Uh, obviously, I still respect the man, but I mean, as a fighter and a trainer, do you know what I mean? You need to have that there, and it, it just it's just faded out. And like I say, I've known now for a very long time, very experienced. I loved his work anyway, and me and my trainer both, um, me and Richard both sat down and said that Alan would be a great trainer for myself. Has it helped, obviously, having like the likes of Dennis McCann coming out of this um, gym and has had a good last, let's say, 48 months, although he's had a great um, amateur career as well. Did that help your decision-making and thinking want to come here and work with Al as well? Yeah, obviously, Dennis is a good kid, obviously, Dennis, but where I am at the minute... Al, I'm, I'm, on the, I'm on the verge of world titles. Of course you are, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm yeah. on the world, uh, verge of world titles, and Al's got that experience. On, you know I mean, he got Bradley Skeet to a very uh, phenomenal level. Mm -hmm. He got Sam Webb, Johnny Guy, he got them all to a great level. Um, and I just do believe that with his experience and his knowledge, he, he can get me that world title fight. Okay, obviously, your last fight was with Jeff Ofori. Yeah. If that was correct. Um, how did you feel that fight went like? Same again, flat. It was very flat performance. Um, obviously, I scraped to win. Just done enough to win, basically. Mm. Didn't really do much. I lost my feet. Work. Basically, the Archie Sharp that everybody knows from back in the day. Amateur. The sharpshooter. Exactly that, the sharpshooter. It, it did get a bit stale, but like I say, I'm back now. I'm, I'm, my footwork is back. I was on me about my footwork because he knows me for years and years, and he knows how good my feet work is. Do you know what I mean? I throw shots from all sorts of angles, and... Uh, and it's coming back, and I'm looking forward to putting it in before Christmas. All right, so talking about the elephant in the room, COVID-19. Yeah. Um, how's that impacted you? Um, As well, a boxer, mentally and stuff like that? Just uh, Obviously, being back when I boxed Jeff O'Fora, was the first time after eight months, so that was mm. a long time. Um, normally, I'm fighting every ten weeks, so for me, it was, it was a bit of a shock being out for so long. But I got the uh, ring rust out, I'd like to say. And uh, look forward to just getting back into the, the day. It's, it's happened to everyone. It's not just myself. Boxing has changed. The whole world has changed at the minute. And I mm. think you just got to get on with it and try and draw the positives out of it, if there is any. But you just got to keep looking for the positives. If you keep being negative about it, about it, you never, um, you never do well. How different is it fighting in front of a crowd to not fighting in front of a crowd? Very unusual. I'm not going to lie. Very unusual. I'm used to having three, four hundred people there supporting at big arenas, packed out. So. Um, it's very unusual, I'm not going to lie. Okay, um, can you see yourself, I know you're, you want to go for a world title, I'm going to get to that, but can you see yourself fighting um, like Joe Cordino or um, a Carl Frampton at, at a later stage to go up the rankings as the number one? Well, I think one? Frampton's obviously going to be next on our list. I think, well, we get out before Christmas because me and Al have never been in the corner as a uh, trainer and fighter, so mm. we may defend our w, uh, the WBO, I'm not too sure yet, I've got to speak to Frank um, this week. Uh, but regarding Frampton, yeah, for, he's in the WBO. He's he's looking at fighting Jamel Herring for the WBO, um, mm. and that world title is in house with MTK, obviously my management team. So there's there's no reason why we can't make that fight happen next year. So once them to a fight, hopefully I'll have the winner of them, whether it's Frampton or Jamel for the WBO world title. Fair enough. And um, who do you see your next? Do you know who your next opponent could be at this side of the um, year? Not not. At, um, not at the minute, because I don't know if people had to fly over. If if mm. I don't really know how it's all working at the minute. Last time, obviously, I had to box Jeff. Had to be um, a UK fighter, so I'm not too sure how it's going to work. To be honest with you. Okay. Um, being on Queensbury Promotions, um, there's obviously a lot of rumours of, you know, maybe Eddie Hearns running from the Matchroom versus Queensbury um, stables. Um, who could you see yourself potentially fighting if that was to happen, promoter versus promoter? 
Would bit, you be excited? Yeah, hundred percent. It's going to be a great, it'll be a great card. I think. Well, the, the obvious is going to be Zelfa Barrett. I think. Mm. Um, obviously, he, he's coming. He's done well. He boxed well against that Donovan. He's got a good, good stoppage there. So, if it's going to be promoter versus promoter, my name and Barrett's always going to be in the mix. Fair enough. Um, I've got to ask you about that White Povetkin fight. Um, yeah. Was you? Did that surprise you, or did you expect that to happen? Do you know what? He boxed very well, didn't he? But at the end of the day, it's like anything. It's not over till that last belt. Mm. And you've got to be switched on at all times. You've got to be switched on at all times. And he threw a lovely shot. And it just, unfortunately, for Dylan White, it, it, it put him asleep. Um, so I'm, I'm sure he's going to be keeping away from that in the rematch, keeping away from that left hook. All right. So for people on my channel that may not be aware, where does the sharpshooter name actually come from, the nickname? <laughs> um... If I remember rightly, it was in a newspaper back in the day when I was an amateur. All right. So I won a national title in a local paper, said the sharpshooter, and we stuck with that name. I used to be the baby face assassin. Okay, okay, okay. Hmm. So um, with the Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua, Joshua's talking about six rounds, Eddie Earn's talking about six rounds he'll do in Fury. Do you actually see that? Can you see that happening? I don't think Joshua's going to win a round. Fair enough. I can't see him winning a round. I don't know where he's got even six rounds from. Listen, when um, Tyson Fury was at his biggest and he wasn't even boxing and mm. there was no comebacks, believe me, mark my words, anyone you speak to, I've always said from day one, Tyson Fury would even beat him now when he's out of the ring. Mm. He'd always beat AJ every day of the week. Um, and you, you'll see that. And I'm glad if that fight happens that I can, my, my point will be proven. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, I think that's probably going to be it for me for now. I don't think I have any more questions I think I want to ask. Is there anything you'd want to share with the public at all? Just thanks for having me on and uh, yeah, keep keep tuned. Things are very exciting about to happen. Okay. Um, and the sharpshooter's back. Sharpshooter's back. Right, thanks for coming on ISN Network in association with TB Promotions and we'll definitely catch up soon. Lovely, thank you. Peace.